Greetings one and all, this is Lloyd Brown and welcome social media family to Lloyd Brown Music. No snazzy titles, no jump cuts, no edit, no music or anything like that. It's another kidney punch of an episode for me today. Um, simply because I cannot create a tune, I cannot produce music, I cannot create any content without giving tribute to three musical icons two of which I only heard about their passing yesterday. Such is the spread of the coverage of the whole coronavirus thing. It's just enveloped everything and everybody. But there's also a level of grief on that side, on that level that people's got to deal with that I can't even begin to comprehend and understand. But coming back to the three musical icons that we have lost, Little Richard, Billy Small, and Betty Wright. Now, with Little Richard, the one thing I can say about him before I go any further is that he was hype personified and justified. There was nothing middle of the road or slow about that brother at all. I remember him saying, in a documentary, I'm tired of this love song. I'm tired of the slow love songs. I want a boogie. <laughs> he done more than boogie, man. He shook up the world with rock and roll. So, going to the two things that comes to mind whenever I hear the name Little Richard. First of all, is the countless footage of him performing on stage, singing Tutti Fruity. Um, Lucille, all those songs, and people just losing their minds when they hear him, and him in turn losing his mind as well. And you have to remember, it was at a time when racial segregation was at its highest in America, and potent, and one can't even begin to imagine being a popular artist in an age where, number one, Black faces weren't allowed to be put on album covers or record sleeves. And two, the audience that you would basically play in front of would be segregated. So you'd have black people on the left, white people on the right, or white people on the left, black people on the right. I can't even begin to overs that. And it's not only him, it's artists of his, of his ilk genre, era, that forged through with the music that they did. And created the popularity that rock and roll and soul and blues music has today. So you have to give tribute to those people, man, because we have the freedom to basically just get up and just press two buttons on a computer and make music. And there's no comeback, you know what I mean? Apart from, yeah, that tune was crap, man. That's the only comeback you're going to really get in this age of the internet, but in that era that Little Richard basically played, I, I can't even begin to overs. So salute not only to him, but for all the other artists that forged ahead with the music of the day that left a legacy of music for us to forge joy. Little Richard was the architect of rock and roll that influenced generations of musicians after him. And whatever you think about the brother, it cannot be ignored, argued, debated, questioned whatsoever. The second thing that comes to mind with Little Richard comes in the form of this movie, Why Do Fools Fall In Love? It just does. Um, it's about the singer called Frankie Lyman, played by Lorenz Tate, whose ex three wives, um, decided to join forces and to sue a record executive, Morris Levy, for the missing royalties for this very popular song, Why Do Fools Fall In Love, which was written by Frankie Lyman and the teenagers, the group that he was with, the vocal group that he was with, Okay. And there was one scene in this movie where little Richard, who played himself, 
went to the courthouse and basically said, um, I am the originator. I am the emancipator of rock and roll. And it was kind of like a weird experience because it was a movie about a real life artist played by somebody else, which featured a real life artist that played himself and proclaimed himself to be the architect, the emancipator and the originator of rock and roll. And yet again, it couldn't be argued. Now, footnote. The movie stars Halle Berry, Leela Rashawn and Vivica A. Fox. Lorenz Tate must have had some real trouble making that movie. It was a dirty job, in it, Lorenz? But somebody had to do it. You lucky. Anyway, that comes to mind whenever I hear Little Richard. And as I mentioned before, um, it just cannot be argued of it cannot be argued of Little Richard standing in rock and roll's history at all. No question. Millie Small. The question can be asked, who hasn't heard My Boy Lollipop? That's more of an easy question to ask. Who hasn't heard My Boy Lollipop? I'm 56 years old and I remember listening to My Boy Lollipop growing up as a child in my house. And I don't think it will be any great stretch of the imagination to suggest that a lot of people of my age group went through the same experience musically by listening to Millie Small's My Boy Lollipop. I mean, our furniture was the same. We had the same garish carpet. We had the drinks cabinet. We had the radiogram. We had the crochet dolls and the glass fish and the ornaments on the shelves. We all had that in our house. So... If you never had my boy Lollipop blaring out of your radiogram on a Saturday or a Sunday, something must be wrong. So for me, where that song comes to mind, obviously, it was the only hit she basically had, to be fair. But it was a hit that was so instrumental in building the record company that she worked for, that she was signed with, which was Island Records. And she had done for Island Records what Nat King Cole had done for Capitol Records. She was, I think she was one of the first million selling artists on Island Records that helped to build Island Records, even before Bob, with the help of Jimmy Cliff around that era as well. But um, there's not really a lot that can be said about her because when you create a hit like that, and no doubt the business practices at the time may have left her scarred with that. Because imagine, you know, a Jamaican artist just making a tune, not really to, to expect much from it, just to expect like an airplay hit to get played a couple of times on the radio and then find out that the song has sold a million copies. And you ain't living an advanced life style as a result of that. It must be troubling, but the same can be said, even with the amount of works that she's put out, it was still instrumental in creating the musical landscape that we know today, especially with reggae music. So salute goes out to you, Millie Small. And last but by no means least, Betty Wright, man. Betty Wright. One of the things that comes to mind when I hear Betty Wright's name is her live album. It comes in the form of her live album. And one song in particular was Tonight Is The Night which was covered in reggae, I think, by Claudette Miller. I'm not sure. Maybe. I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments below. But that song on that album was one of the few live tracks I heard played in a dance, 
in a shubin, in a club back in the day. And it didn't phase the audience at all. And I don't really hear much live recordings played in those scenarios because live recordings are kind of like, although they're recorded in, in, an, in a communal setting, when you play live tunes, it's, it's kind of like a one-to-one -one thing where you want to kind of feel, you want to feel what the audience felt in the privacy of your earbuds or your, your stereo at home or what have you. And Betty Wright was a massive influence in terms of soul divas at that time. Um, I'll give you a pop fact. Betty Wright was the vocal coach of Joss Stone after Joss won her, um, her talent competition. After Joss won that competition, she literally went under the radar to the point where people were wondering, what's happened to her? What's happened to her? What's happened to her? But she was getting groomed for major success. And her vocal coach at that time was Betty Wright. And another thing I liked about Betty Wright was that her longevity carried her through the later years in creating some great hits, man. Um, pain, um, Keeping Love New, man. Keeping Love New. That's a, that's, hold up, get my tongue tied. That is a two step anthem in the clubs right now, without a shadow of a doubt. So with the collective works of all those artists that I've mentioned, they have left a legacy of music that one can only be grateful for as a musician as well. And it strikes a chord because losing a relative is losing a relative, right? Losing a friend is losing a friend. You know, it's just as painful. Losing a musician is just the same for me because musicians are all related in some kind of way. They're related to the chords of music that we play, the notes of music that we sing, you know? just the music that we make. So we're all united and related in that respect. So when, when artist that has been of influence to one has passed, it, it does affect and in turn effect the music that I make in future. So I want to close by sending my condolences out to little Richard Millie Small and Betty Wright's family and loved ones at this time. And it's coupled with the utmost gratitude and thanks for all your collective works and the legacy you have left us and no doubt future generations. I can only say thank you. And with that, I want to say thank you to those who are watching right now. And now I've done that, I feel I can continue my works from today all right so is with that i'm gonna bid you guys adieu and until we link up next time people stay blessed i'm out of here magan later roonies <laughs>